uh, does this for clarity because there's been so so much ambiguity that this judgment makes things very clear there two points that, i would like to make on that, the that's the, i think uh, w w Shalini, before Shalini, before you come into the two points, I have a simple question to you. Does this judgment then lay uh, the foundation of one nation, one law, at least when it comes to divorce and alimony? Absolutely right. And that is the need of the hour. We need one nation and one law. UCC is important because the problem that we have is the interpretation. The major misusing of the Quran for interpretation so misuses of the law. I'm going to tell you the first point. The provision in question is Section 3 of 1A of the Muslim Women Protection of Rights Divorce Act 1986. Now, what does it state? It states the reasonable and fair provision and maintenance to be made and paid to her within the this period by the former husband. But the court held this Correct. provision means that a reasonable mm. and fair provision maintenance is not limited to the Iddat period. He has to pay for the rest of the life till she remarries. And that is exactly that has been forfeited by the Qazis and the Maulanas. Now, why is it important? Today's judgment that has come in after so many years. I mean, look at what has happened. They have taken women right out of any religion into one section that they are not objects. They are human beings. They need respect. They need to live a life which hmm. has to be led okay. in a proper gratified manner. You can't use a woman and throw her away. Okay, fine. If she's working, if she's independent, hmm. many girls today are not even filing for maintenance because they are on their own two feet. The need of the hmm. R is education and educating people Ladies who are still victims of triple talaq, ladies who have been deserted, who are probably forcing themselves on beg begging, okay. getting money. Shalini. This is the need of the hour. Okay, you know, it's all very well and I'm going to wrap this debate here. I think we've heard from all three sides. Uh, but here's my limited point. It's all very... Clear, uh, all very well for the Supreme Court to make things absolutely clear when it comes to alimony for Muslim women and maintenance for Muslim women. So thumbs up to the Supreme Court for doing that. But here's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know any any woman who's who's out there fighting a court case to get alimony, to get maintenance? It takes 20 years, 25 years to do it. So the Supreme the Court reason. would be well advised, and it's, I'm in no position to advise the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court would be well advised to look into this aspect and at least fast track that. Plus, there are no courts on how much, uh, you know, alimony needs to be paid. paid. In the U.S., there are courts. In India, jo manglo, nahi mango, there is no fixed amount. Uh, you know, there is no calculation. There is no formula. That needs to be fixed by the Supreme Court as well. So I hope if the Supreme Court is listening to my humble opinion, it needs to look into these two things as well.